Good morning, good morning, Agape. My name is Reverend Jason Davion Mitchell. It's my absolute joy to be here with you today to welcome you to the Way of Meditation service. Ah, this is such a beautiful time that we get to gather today, and it's my joy to share our selected reading for the day with you. It is from the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. It can be found on page 51 of the section, The Key to the Spiritual Dimension. In life-threatening emergency situations, the shift in consciousness from time to presence sometimes happens naturally. The personality that has a past and a future momentarily recedes and is replaced by an intense conscious presence, very still, but very alert at the same time. Whatever response is needed then arises out of the state of consciousness. The reasons why some people love to engage in dangerous activities, such as mountain climbing, car racing, and so on, although they may not be aware of it, is that it forces them into the now. That intensely alive state that is free of time, free of problems, free of thinking, free of the burden of the personality. Slipping away from the present moment even for a second may mean death. Unfortunately, they come to depend on a particular activity to be in the state. But you don't need to climb the north face of the Eiger. You can enter into that state now. And I'm going to invite you to turn within for a time of prayer as we together set the intention to enter into the state of a present conscious awareness. <sighs> How very grateful I am for this day, for this moment, for this very hour, for the aliveness that is today, for the aliveness that is our very collective beingness. Oh, there is so much good that is unfolding, so much good that surrounds us, so much good that undergirds and supports us. Above and below and all around, goodness. And I'm knowing this goodness as the life of God, as the living intelligence, as that powerful presence which is everywhere. I'm knowing it is right there where our loved ones are, right here where we sit or stand or walk. It is wherever our eyes fall in the buildings or on the highways or on the fields of love. Oh, how grateful I am to know this presence as my life and the life of this entire congregation. To know we establish our oneness and union in God in this love, in this light. And I bless this service as we go forward in the practice and the teaching of meditation, we anchor an awareness of the all. I bless Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith as he comes forward and brings a Dharma talk that opens the caverns and spaces of the infinite within us all. And I'm knowing that our time in meditation seals the realization of this within each and every one of us. I give thanks. I am in absolute celebration of this reality now. And I simply let it be so. And so it is. Amen. Amin. Ashe. <sighs> Reverend Coco. Thank you so much, Reverend Jason. So just come with me into the stillness, into the silence. Reverend Michael is on his way. And I welcome you, as Reverend Jason did. So let's turn within and dive deeply into the holiest state of divine grace that calls us, that pulls us, that invites us, that loves us, that cherishes us, that adores us, that says, you are my beloved, come into my heart. So we take a breath on that. And we give way, give way, give way. And you can continue in your meditation. You may focus on the third eye. You may focus on your breath. 
but the invitation is to dive deep and to be renewed. With every breath you take, go deeper. Glory be to the Most High that resides within all of us. A presence that's never an absence. Isn't that a wonderful thing to contemplate with all of the superstitious thoughts that run through the mind of humanity? That God is a man, that God is capricious, that God is jealous, that God gets mad at us, that God has human emotions and things of that particular nature. Humanity has come so far and come into a mystical awareness that we can commune with the presence because our life is the life of the presence. That which 
are not congruent with each other cannot commune. Oil can't commune with water. The viscosity is so different that it separates after a while. But you can commune with the presence because your life emerges from the presence. So you can see the arc of superstition uh, from a god in the sky, from a capricious, jealous god, to a god that has a memory of mistakes that you have made, all kinds of superstitious thoughts that have become a part of religiosity. But today, we stand with a great awareness that our life is indeed an emanation of the only life that there is. And all that we suffer from are misconceptions that condense themselves into experience. It's paradoxical that you can actually experience something that isn't real. Isn't that interesting? You can actually have an experience of something that's not real. As a matter of fact, your entire past <laughs> primarily is not real and never happened. But you, know, you have to wait for the rest of the services to come to me break that down a little bit. <laughs> I'm enticing you into that awareness. But I'll just say, say this, you know, uh, I've shared this before over the years, and this has so much to do with meditation, that when I was attending uh, Morehouse College a number of years ago, um, we would do what we would call a practical joke. Where do you get these names practical jokes from? I, I wasn't practical. But we would go out into the yard at Morehouse, take a book of matches, and we would strike a match, blow it out, and then touch an unsuspecting student with a cold match. They would feel that they would be in touch with a hot match, and they would form a heat blister on their hand. They'd get a little upset. We'd say, we touched you with the cold match. Come with me. And we'd do it to another student until people began to see that they were having an experience of something that never happened, but they were experiencing it nevertheless. So humanity has dropped a nightmare pill over the last couple of years, and for longer than that, in which humanity is experiencing fear, doubt, worry, separation, not enoughness, scarcity, all manner of lies that cascade through the human dilemma that cascade through the social milieu, that cascade through the misuse of media, so that individuals are having direct experiences of something that isn't real. Meditation not only wakes you up to the reality of oneness and unity with love and beauty and intelligence, it also brings into consciousness the repressed and suppressed thoughts based on experiences that weren't real. And as they're teased into awareness via meditation, via visioning, via affirmative prayer, those thoughts are transmuted into higher frequencies, dissolved, and you find yourself free. It's called spiritual liberation. What I've just described is the dynamic of liberation. So when you're sitting, you are liberating yourself from falsity. You're liberating yourself from that which isn't real. You're liberating yourself from superstition. You're liberating yourself, liberating yourself from religiosity and becoming a candidate for the transcendent that which is transcending your personal mind, that which is transcending your limited perception based on personality and subpersonalities, so that your core of unity, your real self, your real self, that which isn't touched by time or experience, that the whole thrust of spiritual practice is to get you to. Now, of course, in the process of growing and unfolding spiritually, structures are stabilized, our body temples can become more healthy, our emotional bodies more, more, more pure, our mental bodies more clear, the, the financial bodies are more coherent with abundance. All of that takes place, yes. It does, it's called the added things. 
And oftentimes people go way for the added things and forget the real thing, which is your transcendent awareness of your oneness with the presence of God. So all spiritual paths with heart are taking you to the point of transcending worldly consciousness so that you can live in the world but full of bliss and ecstasy and power and love and joy and allow for the cascade of that energy to manifest itself as a dynamic peace, a deep sense of all of your needs being met and the manifestation of such, clarity, inspired wisdom. Can you imagine going through your entire week and not worried about one thing? Going through your entire week not complaining about anything? Can you imagine going through your entire week not criticizing anyone? If you can, that's a verge of spiritual liberation. Because what I've just described, if you go into the hater net of the internet, <laughs> you'll see all kinds of nincompoops just spewing nonsense and criticizing, complaining and bemoaning their fates. They're not really nincompoops. They're just ignorant. You're coming into spiritual liberation, and you're coming into a space where you're becoming willing to live life free and unencumbered. Now, again, there's a part of you that thinks that's just a bit much. And so humanity succumbs to exogenous pharmaceutical drugs and ways to inebriate themselves and to self-medicate so they don't feel the pain and the internal suffering that's going on. And so it gets repressed and suppressed. But that which is suppressed and repressed, if it is not remembered to forget, it still runs your life. You want your life to be run by intelligence and love and beauty and compassion and generosity, creativity. You want your life to be run by God, not by all the stuff you're repressing and suppressing through self-medication, busyness, and all manner of things to keep you from having an encounter with the divine and going through the dynamic of spiritual liberation where that which is suppressed or repressed comes into your awareness be dissolved. Meditation is about waking up. Meditation is about transmuting the thought forms emanating from a lie of separation so that you, so that we can live free. So you can't imagine yourself going through most of your week without complaining about anything, going most of your week without criticizing people. You, that, you can start with your imagination and then ultimately have a moment-by-moment, day-by-day awareness that really, from the depth of your being, all is well. I'm not talking about the experience. I'm talking about that which is real that then becomes your experience. But it takes work appreciative inquiry, introspection that leads to transpection. Meditation is the way. And the way in is the way out of the horns of dilemma of the human experience. Let's go in. Bring our shoulders to our ears. We squeeze everything in our body temple. Face everything. We do the exact opposite. Release. Ah. Ah. Give permission for the body to let go. Relax. 
surrender to gravity. We don't have to force ourselves to stay in the chair. We just let go. The field, known as gravity, allows us to sit here without floating away. Thumb and forefinger together. Mudra, transcending the ego perception, limited point of view, transcending it. We place the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth, which creates a current from the base of the spine all the way up the spine into the oral cavity and beyond, energy flowing. The attention and the eye slightly, not with tension, just aware of the space between the eyebrows. Simultaneously, the throat space of power, the heart space, solar plexus, base of the spine. We're just aware. are the light, the light that lights up every man, every woman, every individual that comes to the planet. And this light is emanating from the depth of our being, cascading out in all directions simultaneously. We establish an intention to wake up to our glorious nature. Our attention is on our intention. The holy breath is keeping us present, meaning we notice that the body's breathing and we notice very quickly that you can never breathe in the future or in the past. That breath is happening presently. So we are staying present to our intention, dominion over our attention. Our intention is to wake up, our attention is on the breath and our intention, and here we sit. Slight smile on the face that releases the cascade of tonic, tonic chemicals that slow down the aging process and amplify the efficacy of our own immune system.
you have more dominion over your attention than you think. You're being attentive to your intention to wake up to your glorious nature. You're attentive to the breath. You're allowing quietude and stillness, sacred silence, inner solitude to become magnified. Be still and know that I am, the I am, the I am in the midst of you is God. still and know that the I am God is in the midst of you. Not the guy in the sky, but the presence that is never an absence. 
now. Another few seconds, be still, quiet, available, that the truth may be revealed in your awareness. You're not trying to make anything happen. You're making something welcome. You're allowing the truth of your being to be revealed. You shall know the truth of your being and the truth shall make you free. Be still and know. Take a deep inhalation. And release. And allow ourselves to be lifted into the field of gratitude. Oh, so many wonderful things happen when we allow ourselves to flow motion. Go into flow motion, into gratitude. Our perceptual windows become so clean and clear that we, we see not through a glass darkly, but we see the presence everywhere. And from this dynamic of gratitude, the sacred law gives us more to be grateful for. And, and paradoxically, we don't want anything. So excess does not interfere with our success. And all needs are met. From the consciousness of gratitude, the sense of recognition of the presence becomes so profound. Unabashedly, we can say, I'm one with God. When you see me, you see the presence that is moment by moment by moment by moment sending me. And the very word that is being spoken is a law. A 
speak the word with the authority of one knowing that all that there is is God and that everything that is is a manifestation of the only thing that is. I speak the word for each and every one of us that we may be free today. Free to be healthy. Every organ, action, function of our body, temple made whole now. It's already whole in the mind of God. We let it. All needs met. We're in a field of abundance. We're not looking for reasons why we're not happy because you'll only find excuses. We're looking for one reason to be happy and allowing that point in consciousness to allow the eternal to break into time. All needs met right now. Accept it. Everything working together for our good. Oh, we stand in this awareness right now. The word is spoken. That we come to an awareness that this is the day the Lord has made, commanding us to rejoice in it. We take the heed and we rejoice. We rejoice. And come into the vibration of all things are working together for our good. We might not like all things that are happening, but in a progressive universe, it's all working together for our good, and now we are on our own side, not in our own way. This is the way we pray. Gratitude. Dynamic recognition of the presence. Deep sense of unity. Wonderful realization Great thanksgiving and a soulful release. And it's all happening right now. This is where we live. And we allow it to be so. And so it is. Amen. And so as we have moved into the frequency of being reborn in the spirit that is coming out of the milieu of human consciousness. It's a rebirth into the moment of coherence, oneness with God. It's a, it's a, it's a soulful rebirth in the spirit right here within us. Accept that for yourself right now. And as you open your eyes and kind of bow to whoever, whoever you are meditating with anywhere on this globe, this planet Earth, Come into the spirit of generosity with me right now. Don't hesitate. Don't deny. Don't delay. Don't put it off. This is your opportunity to support this spiritual community that's been supporting millions for 36 years in November. And you get to be a part of that. We thank all of you who have paid it forward for many years and provided a space for newbies to come in and take classes and be of sacred service and be a part of this glowing congregation all around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the generosity. This is our opportunity to give now. And the first thing we want to do is we want to turn within and give thanks to the great God of the universe that's within us fully and completely. We bless this spiritual community, all ministries, all programs, all projects, all evolutionary collaborations, all staff, all equipment, all volunteers. We bless everything the ministers and the practitioners, the glowing congregation dedicated all to God consciousness and all needs met flowing through this community now. Amen. Amen. So if you're willing and ready, and I know you are, you may begin to give now. Many of you already know how to do this, but you can begin right now by taking your smartphone and texting the word give to 424-321-6243. Everything I'm about to tell you right now is going to be on the screen. Many of you are projecting it onto your big screen television. Many of you are looking at it on your mobile phone. Many of you are looking at a computer. However you're looking at it, it's all being projected right now. Text, give to 424-321-6243. Let your phone prompt you. You choose the amount or let the spirit choose the amount because you may choose too low. Choose the regularity of your gift and do it now.
That's how you can use your phone. The other way you can use your phone right now, you can uh, focus your camera on the QR code that's on your screen. As you go to that, that particular spiritual funnel, you can discover how to give by using your QR code. You can do that right now. This is, this is you know, we're moving to a paperless society, a cashless society in many ways, so get a jump start on it. Text to donate. Use the QR code. Or if you want to use our, go to our website, it'll also provide you with a lot of information about our community. You can sign up. Put your, give us your email address and receive inspirational thoughts a couple of times during the week. Go to agapelive.com, A-G-A-P-E-L-I-V-E.com. You'll see donation at the top eventually. Follow that particular funnel. Put how much you want to give into the cart and give to Agape right now. If you're on Agape's Facebook page, there's a donation button there. You can use that as well. Agape International. There are other people that have kind of snuck in and used the name Agape. But we're Agape International Spiritual Center. You can go to the Facebook page there and you can give on that Facebook page. For those of you, sometimes old school is the best school. You can mail it in. Checks, money orders. Made out to Agape International, 8549 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 1156, Beverly Hills, California, 90211. Mail yours in right away. I'll stop singing when you do it. <clears throat> no, I'm not. I, can't I cannot tell a lie. I will sing as long as I want to. Anyway, there, those are the ways to give. Newbies, leap into it. Old heads, keep on giving. I'll be right back, Reverend Julie. Good morning. You can visit agapelive.com for details on all items mentioned and all times are Pacific time. We are so looking forward to opening our doors today at 11 a.m. So if you're in the Los Angeles area, we welcome you today. And we look forward to seeing you for our next in-person service. October 30th, meditation is at 11 a.m., fellowship service at 11.30 a.m. All services will, as always, be live streamed. Soak Sound Frequency Therapy, the clinically proven healing protocol that pairs positive affirmations with specific sound frequencies to provide energetic and cellular alignment, is offering our Agape community an exclusive new opportunity. When you sign up today for our seven-day free trial, Using the code AGAPE50, you'll receive 50% off of all sound soak frequencies for life. Yes, you only pay half price for the life of your subscription. So go to soak.com, enter the code AGAPE50, and get your soak on today. Do you ever wonder how Reverend Michael lives such an awakened and activated life? Awake and Activate, Agape University's newest course offering a, is offering a rare opportunity to learn from Reverend Michael himself about the universal laws and principles that he uses every single day. In this five-week deep dive with Reverend Michael himself, you will unlock your spiritual power and live your highest potential and purpose. Class begins Tuesday, October 18th, live on Zoom. Go to agapelive.com, click on the banner, and register today. Also today, Teen Agape meets online at 11.15 a.m. Click the Teen Agape banner on our website to register. Preteens ages 9 to 13 meet at 2 o'clock. Children ages 3 to 8 meet at 3.30. Both are live on Zoom. To get your Agape Youth Fun Packs, email revleon at agapelive.com. And today, the Agape Wise Ones invite our 50-plus community to experience expanding as the presence. That's at 2 o'clock via Zoom. Click on the Agape Wise Ones banner on our website to register. Agape Agape Youth and Family Ministry is looking for volunteers as it prepares to welcome our youth back into live in-person Sunday services. Reverends Leon and Arlene will conduct a training workshop beginning September 20th. Contact RevLeon at agapelive.com to join the fun. 
And uh, Odyssey, Agape's young adults ministry for those ages 20 to 35, invites you to join Friday, September 23rd, 7 p.m. Click the banner on the website to join. Contact Rev Arlene at agapelive.com with any questions. The Crisis Support Clinic offers Zoom mini counseling questions Zoom mini counseling sessions every Monday from 4 to 6 p.m. To receive details for your first come, first serve, complimentary one-on-one -on -one session with a licensed practitioner, email crisissupport at agapelive.com. This is offered to the community at large, and anyone may attend. Monday through Saturday, we got you on Facebook Live. Prayer is at 8 a.m. Meditation is at 12 noon. Agape Spiritual Community Gatherings meet at 5.30 p.m. on Friday evenings. Con connect in community with an enriching, inspiring gathering led by our practitioners and ministers. Email scg at agapelive.com for the deets. And are you seeking spiritual insight and advice around your relationships, finances, health, life purpose, or in understanding world events? That would be a yes, 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 yes. Email revmichael at podcast at michaelbeckwith.com. Your question may be featured during his Life Question of the Week segment in his upcoming new podcast, Take Back Your Mind, coming soon. Dance with the Rev. Get your endorphins flowing. Shift your mood. Show us your moves in a one-minute video dancing during a Sunday service. Upload it on the banner on our website. You may see yourself hashtag Dance with the Rev on social media and on Sundays. Many blessings to you, Agape. Thank you, Reverend Julie Moret. Many blessings cascading out of no thing to become the very somethingness of your life. While she was speaking, I know, I'm sure that you were preparing your offerings, your donations, your tithes, your giftings. However you want to describe that, this is our opportunity to make a difference in our spiritual community through generosity. So you can be in that flow right in this moment. Also want to shout out those who are part of our auto tithe program where you have established an ongoing gifting by setting an auto tithe program up so that every week or every month it's already taken out of your bank account or off of your credit card in which you will receive miles, perhaps. It really assists us in our budgeting process here. So whether you're giving regularly on the text to donate, on the auto tithe, or giving weekly or merely getting in, all of it is beautiful and wonderful. Just make sure that you're stretching your giving muscles. As I've said over the years, we give to live until we live to give. That's a growth spiritually. So we stop in this moment and we give thanks for the tremendous generosity of the Agape worldwide community. We give thanks that all of our needs are met. We give thanks that we're becoming stronger and stronger to be more of a birthplace of the beloved community, that we may anchor heaven on earth and be a blessing never a curse. It's happening now, and so it is. Amen. Thank you so much for participating in the Way of Meditation service. The next service will begin at 8.30 a.m., meditation, 9 o'clock a.m., worship celebration service, and then 11 a.m., 11.30 worship and celebration service. Come join the fun. Stand up where you are. Feel the import of this song and the benediction. Listen. I'm tired of the guilt. Did you hear that? I'm tired of the guilt. That brings me pain. That brings us pain. Now is the time for me to let go. Now of is the shame. time for us to let go of the shame. The past behind. Past. I see, a I see a new. I'm ready I am for ready my for my change, my transformation, my unfoldment, I'm ready my metamorphosis. For I'm ready for my change. I forgive me. I forgive me. I forgive. Everything, Everything that we have been holding on to, we now let go. 
We surrender. I surrender. We're ready for our metamorphosis. We're ready for our change, our transformation, our unfoldment. Oh, standing on the precipice of the nowness of this moment, peering over into the very promised land of our own being, we see that all is well. We see that we are the recipients of a divine and compelling right action moving through us in such a way that we're able to anchor intelligence and brilliance and love and beauty and compassion and generosity and creativity on earth as it is in the heart and mind of the infinite. Oh, we're setting ourselves free, setting ourselves on spiritual fire that the world may come watch us glow. It's happening now. This is a great day. We celebrate it and let it be so. And so it is. Amen. Have a bright and beautiful day. I love you.